All right, change agents. It's time to transition to an activity called Privilege Walk. Today we will examine able body privilege. Please line up. Step forward if others don't get frustrated with you in public for needing special accommodations or holding up lines. Step forward if you have never felt isolated or discriminated against by being placed in an alternative ability-based classroom. Step forward if you have never had to ask for accommodations based on your physical ability and as a result were labeled as an inconvenience. Step forward if you have struggled to find living quarters due to lack of building features or if the building does have features, you have used these accommodations without needing them on behalf of your ability. Step forward if you have never been praised as an inspiration or been asked invasive questions based on your physical ability. Step forward if you can take a step. It's time to get real about able-bodied privilege. As a person who is able-bodied, I do not have to think about any of these prompts, and I'll admit it, I rarely ever do. I'm guilty of avoiding the conversation because I do not even have the language to start it. There are bumper stickers, pins, and ribbons about not using the R word, but that's where the conversation ends. The discussion always tokenizes certain disabilities while completely ignoring the majority of the spectrum. We never talk about people who are hard of hearing or vision impaired. We ignore people living with cerebral palsy, Down syn syndrome, and other cognitive disabilities. We do not even know how to talk about this issue, and that's the problem. As a change agent, I have to remember I will never know everything, and it is my responsibility to continue learning. This journey is never over. People with disabilities are not just people in wheelchairs. Ability encompasses a spectrum of cognitive, physical, and mental disabilities that go unrecognized and undiscussed. As an ATP member with depression, anxiety, and PTSD, it's really easy to advocate for mental health while forgetting the ability privilege I do have. Advocating for mental health should never be a cop-out to ignore experiences different than mine. And it's time to recognize that just because I have identities in one space doesn't mean I don't have privileges in others. I need to acknowledge my privilege and be in solidarity with those around me. One of my biggest takeaways from working, living, and spending time with individuals who have special needs is that there is a spectrum of abilities, strengths, and interests. I've learned you cannot simply label someone as special or mentally challenged. Our school system still uses problematic language and it isolates students away from the classroom setting, and they are not seen as typical that way. This not only adds to the stigma that already surrounds individuals who have cognitive delays, but it also it makes it that much harder for them to try to fit in with the regular classroom. These students are often made to perform monotonous tasks that fail to promote learning and self-growth. For those of us who have never been labeled mentally challenged, let us acknowledge our privileges. We need to start dialogue about the stigma that surrounds individuals with cognitive delays. Some of my deepest lessons in compassion and empathy have come from my work with adaptive parks and recreation and getting to know the clients personally and my younger brother. There are more than 54 million Americans with disabilities, making it the nation's largest minority. That's because anybody can have a disability. It doesn't matter your race, how rich you are, who you love, or anything, because at any moment, any one of us who have able-bodied privilege can lose it. Ignoring the community and the accomplishments of the disability rights activist movement only allows us to further live in that privilege. The buttons on doors that I use when I'm simply too lazy to open up the door were not put there for me. They were put, they exist because of the fight from the disability rights activists. The disability rights movement advocates advocates for people with disabilities to have fundamental rights, create consciousness, and to destigmatize disability culture. And isn't that what us change agents are fighting for all? Anyways. Move forward if you can commit to continue learning and examination of your privilege.